and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you a little bit about some of the artwork that I love from Papua New Guinea. A lot of it is from the highlands of the Sepik River area and it's a certain type of tribal motif that inspires me to paint what I see from that area. So I'm going to show you a couple of my paintings. A lot of these designs are anthropomorphic in style and they kind of look like aliens, but they are ancestral spirits of the tribes from Papua New Guinea. And these were very popular about 100 years ago. Now since they've become more westernized and missionaries have started to come in, a lot of these designs are being lost because they're from a certain belief system from a long time ago, from all their ancestors. But they are still around, and that's what I love to paint. So I'm going to show you a few of the designs that I have. This first one here is on canvas. And when you first look at it, I don't know what you see. It does go this way, but as you look at it, you can probably notice it can also go this way. And... Sometimes you see, like to me, these look like two hands, two arms, a mouth, and then, oh, here's another mouth. These could be eyes. But then there's eyes there, and you could flip it this way. And this one is based off of a headdress during a ceremonial dance. Another one that is very common in Papua New Guinea is this one. And I painted this a long time ago. When I first started painting, this is what attracted me to art, was specifically Papua New Guinea. I would go into the library at my school, and I would just go in the basement where they had all the island art from Papua New Guinea, and I would just draw and paint and read about the culture. And I really liked it a lot. I still do. And then here's another one. So, for this one, I did not use the traditional colors. I kind of added in a little bit on my own flair because I don't want to outright copy these images because I know they're very sacred to the people. So, I have a lot of respect when I make these. Now, these two guys behind me here are very older, and I think I did take them right from the design, but I changed the colors. And they're very happy, but they also could be different things when you look at those. So my favorite design from this area are these ones. I love the ones where they have like the round circle inside and they have the two eyes. And to me, these are like the legs, and these are the arms, and then these are the head pieces. And for this one, I used my own colors. I splattered the background. This piece is about 15 years old already. And then if you look up at this one, it's the same one. You just designed a little bit different. I threw some metallic paint in here. Now, the story with these guys, I'm going to show you a couple more that I have. This one here, <laughs> they're all kind of hiding in the jungle. So it's like if you were out in the islands and you're pulling up to an island in your boat, and just as ready as you're about to come in, you see these in the jungle staring out at you. Are they good? Are they bad? Can anybody else see them? So what these are, they are from a certain tribe in Papua New Guinea, and they are sea spirits. And the people from the village, I think it's once every seven years, they have a huge celebration where the sea spirit comes out of the ocean. And in the village, they have a certain amount of people who wear these elaborate headdresses and they wear grass skirts and they go and they dance around and it's a, a feast. And then after the night's through, they don't do it again for another seven years because that's when they say the sea spirit comes up.
Another thing I wanted to talk about is the flying fox from Papua New Guinea. I don't know if you've heard of the flying fox, but that's what they call their fruit bat. And they're a very huge flying bat. And a lot of these older designs, they base on the flying fox. And I'm gonna show you a design right here, if you look at that closely. Whenever you see one of these, any design that looks like a bird and the two wings right here, where eyes could be almost, those are the flying fox designs. And there's a couple more on this side. And whenever I'm drawing, I always go back to this design and I always throw this in my abstract style, the flying fox. This one you can see um, a person there. And then here's a lot on that side too. These are pieces I collected about 15 years ago. And the flying fox actually represents headhunting because headhunting was well known to be going on in Papua New Guinea, especially about 100 years ago. And the flying fox, what they do is they eat fruit from the tree. And they like big round pieces of fruit. And to the Papua New Guinean, the fruit symbolizes somebody's head. So, and they believe that that's where your soul lives, is inside the head. So hence, when they go on these tribal wars with other villages, a lot of times on their shields, they have these images of the flying fox because it means that they're coming to get your head. This one here is the image of the sea spirit that I was telling you about. And so they would wear this on their body like that. And that's my favorite image right there. And then this is the grass skirt that they wear around the bottom to cover themselves. And here's a few more. They're all different. So here's another image right here. Um, so a lot of these designs were also turned into skull racks when their enemies would perish they would take their skulls because they believed that they still had a lot of power in them and they put them on skull racks and on the skull racks would have these designs and then also as in this picture right here you see the flying foxes uh, these are goat boards and goat boards were given to men when they come of age, usually around the age of 13, and it'd be their own protective shield for when they went to war or just to hang up in the men's house. And these images of the ancestors on them, they believed that they would come out of the goat board, go ahead, they'd come out of the board, go to the enemy village and scare them or make them sick so that by the time they actually got to the village to fight, everybody would be too scared and the enemies wouldn't want to fight them at all. And here's another one, and this one has shells in the eyes. And then these were a couple that I designed a long time ago. The traditional colors are red, white, yellow, and black because they use all minerals from the earth to get their colors. And here's another one. This is a very traditional one. And then here's one that I did up. This one kind of represents like a, a twin spirit. And then this is a collage that I put together of all different ones. These are traditional goat boards. That and then this is the sea spirit. The one that I kind of designed this one. And then this last one here is one that I did a long time ago, just with colored pencil. And I put the flying fox in there. This one kind of looks like an abstract rooster. And then you see the eye. And these are all like traditional Papua New Guinea designs that I incorporated in there. So I thank you and hopefully you learned a little bit about the traditional art from Papua New Guinea. It's what got me started in my art career. 
When people ask me who my favorite artist is, I always say, oh, the people from Papua New Guinea, just because that's what it is. It's very real, and you can feel something. Thank you.